Coming up next on Cooking with MFRD, we have an award-winning dish as Captain Brian Lowe shares his recipe for smoked chili. Hello and welcome to this episode of Cooking with MFRD. I'm your host Ashley McDonald and today I've got Captain Shift Inspector Brian Lowe here with me today and he's going to be sharing his award-winning smoked chili recipe with us. You're going to need the following ingredients. Two pounds of round steak, one pound of mild sausage or ground beef, one sweet onion, one green bell pepper, one poblano pepper, six garlic cloves, one 28 ounce can of chili beans, preferably bushes, one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, four tablespoons of Worcestershire, two tablespoons of liquid smoke, four tablespoons of chili powder, four to five dashes of hot sauce, Cholula is preferred, one teaspoon of ground coriander, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and salt and pepper to taste. Well, Captain Lowe, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. My pleasure. All right. We um, actually are going to have a treat today. He's sharing with us his People's Choice award-winning chili recipe that he won at a cook-off sponsored by the Noon Exchange Club. So thank you very much. What have we got going on here? Well, I went on and prepared the vegetables and the meat and that, so, they, so they could marinate overnight. Uh, onions, bell peppers, poblanos all chopped up. Uh, uh, round steak. Um, of course, I use round steak because I can buy it already. Uh, pretty thin and sliced, so I can just, uh, it's easy to cube up, and, okay. and, and then, of course, the sausage is uh, mixed in there, too, and then uh, Worcestershire and, and um, the uh, liquid smoke. I have it all in there mixed up real good, and uh, it sets overnight, and then early in the morning, I uh, prepare it uh, to go into the chili. Okay, all right, so we're going to get these into the pans. Okay, all right. And now, um, so... What's the purpose of the marinating the meat? And do you have to do it overnight? Uh, you don't have to do it overnight. Uh, I, it seems like I win more when it marinates overnight, but. Uh, so apparently you I, did it back on Veterans Day, right? Uh, yes, that's <laughs> correct. Uh, I have uh, marinated it. You know, I like to marinate it at least three hours so that it, get, it absorbs that smoke flavor into the meat. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's whatever you have time for. I, uh, if someone wanted to make it today, uh, they could, you know, go out and get the ingredients and uh, and put it together and let it sit for a couple hours and and uh, and still have a good product at the end. So. Okay, and you've actually got two pans going here. Is that something that you normally do when you're making this recipe? Uh, well, I usually cook it in in two batches because there's a, there's about three cups of vegetables and about three pounds of meat. So it's a lot of stuff. You don't want to try to do it in in uh, in one pot. Uh, it, just to spread it out, that, that way everything gets cooked evenly. And we'll mention, just since we're from the fire department, we'll always mention these little safety tips. But as you can see, Captain Lowe has the handles turned inward on the stove so that it's easier not to knock them off and cause any problems. So uh, we've got these going in the pan. Do you generally just kind of, do you know about how long that usually takes? Uh, or? Well, just about, I guess about 10 minutes. I've never okay. timed it. Uh, it's just like browning hamburger meat or anything else with vegetables. I uh, just want to get it uh, brown or good and consistent. I mean, I wouldn't think that you have to cook it uh, completely all the way through because you are going to want to simmer it for about three or four hours, okay. but it will continue to reduce in the pot uh, to uh, give you a good consistency for your chili. So. Okay, funny little story about the chili cook-off actually. Um, there were three of us that entered the chili cook-off, myself included and Captain Lowe and one of our firefighters, Andy Smithson. And Captain Lowe was actually on shift that day and he dropped off his chili. And then later on when they were doing the judging and everything, I sent him a message and said, is your chili supposed to taste like vinegar? And I said, it's got a really strong vinegar taste to it. And I think it tore his nerves up a little bit, but it was just all in fun. And he ended up winning the People's Choice Award as we mentioned before and got some free Titans tickets. So. And then Andy Smithson actually also won a door prize. So we, um, we had a good little friendly competition moment there. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. It, you may have not thought it was so friendly, the, but it was pretty friendly. Yeah. <laughs> the guys at the station, they, they took the wrath of that one, so I thought they messed it up. So, so. <laughs> he thought they tainted it a little bit. <laughs> so, also, um, just want to mention a few things about Brian. How long have you been a captain with us? Uh, I've been a captain for about eight years, uh, 2007. That's when I was promoted to captain. So, I've okay. uh, been with Murfreesboro for uh, almost uh, 15, hired on in uh, June of 01. Awesome. And he actually just, I'm going to toot your horn a little bit. Oh, okay. He actually just graduated from um, Oklahoma State University with your master's in fire and emergency management administration. So yes. we're very proud of him for doing that. And he's also our special events team coordinator at the fire department. So any events that uh, the public has that are like larger quantities of people and they want the fire department to come out, Brian usually takes care of coordinating that. You may see us at like the Duck Derby and uh, Uncle Dave making days. Yes, all the major events, uh, Jazz Fest, uh, anything, Cannonsburg is going to uh, call in a lot of people or just uh, make the area congested. Uh, usually uh, uh, anything that happens on the square that uh, limits access for the fire department, uh, we're going to try to be there to, uh, you know, for the one, for the safety of those attending, but also uh, we can um, increase our response time to uh, uh, the, anybody who needs our right. help. So, right. uh, and also we use that time to uh, increase contact uh, with uh, for fire prevention division to hand out uh, materials, uh, right. uh, fire prevention materials to adults, and then of course some goodies to the kids. Right. So, right. Yeah. Okay, and this looks like we're getting we're getting there. Close on it. Yeah, yeah, it's starting to get get brown a little bit. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do in your free time. I know that you have four children, so we definitely want to mention yeah, them. Yeah, I have four children, so I don't have a lot of free time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Lucas and Caden, twin boys, they're ten year ten years old. Uh, I have Isabel, she's five now. I turned five December the first, um, and then Liam, he's two and a half. Aww. So yeah. Um, but like I said, I've been going to school for the last two and a half years, and uh, that's taken up most of my time. I uh, went straight through, uh, so seven semesters in a row, I'm ready to get back to uh, my hobbies, which I'm golf and fishing, stuff like that. Golfing so. and fishing and mm -hmm. spending time with those kids. His little girl, and we'll definitely have to show you a picture of her. She is the cutest little thing. She's not that any of the other children aren't, but she's <laughs> a little fashionista. She likes to dress um, very fashionably, and um, he has a gorgeous wife, Janet, also, and she takes care of making sure the little one is well, thank you, really decked out in those cute clothes, so. Yeah, fancy nice. Yes. Okay, and we're getting a really good brown on it. Um, talk to me about some of these other items here, uh, the importance. I know you said that you like this particular well, this hot is, sauce. Uh, this is some of my favorite brands. Okay. Uh, and hot sauce. Like, like I said, I make this uh, family friendly. Uh, okay. You, it can be, you can, I use mild ingredients. You can use uh, jalapenos instead of pabanos or hot sausage instead of mild sausage. Uh, I mean, you, I take a little shortcuts to use my, so that my family or the kids will eat it. But uh, Cholula, I still add some hot stuff to kind of keep it honest to the chili, but uh, right. uh, but these are some of my favorite flavors, bushes, uh, beans. I like, I'm a fan of pintos, not a big fan of kidney beans. So um, that's, you know, that's what I'll put in mind. Um, but, you know, most of this stuff uh, you can get to make this chili for around uh, 20 to 25 bucks. Uh, of course, you'll use uh, spices that are in the, uh, hopefully that you already have in the cabinets. So, you know, the spices right. no one uses, the coriander and the cumin, you don't use those all the time. So Yeah, uh, I thought it was interesting about the coriander being in there. That's something that you generally don't hear about being in a chili recipe, or at least I've never heard of it. But I think that's kind of interesting that yeah. that's in there. So. Uh, this recipe, I uh, uh, really turned me on. Of course, when I saw it or found it, I thought, wow, I like the, the liquid smoke. That's different. It and, is. Uh, and and it does. It's added a lot to it. So uh, uh, now, when you put the meat into the pot, let me ask this: because a lot of times okay. people will drain, but do you leave the liquid in the pot? Yes. Okay. Yes, we're gonna want, we don't want to drain anything. We want all that goodness to go in the pot. Well, that probably adds to the to the flavor also. So. Yeah. yeah. No vinegar. No vinegar. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. He's a very good sport. Yeah. Um, and also, you've got this Darth Vader apron on here. Tell us about that. Are you a big Star Wars fan? Uh, not really. I just thought it was uh, about that time of year, I guess. Everybody. <laughs> That's just too funny. I'll have to get me one like that, but she'll have to yeah. have a bow in her hair or yeah. something. <laughs> 
I think I was looking for a Chewbacca. I think Chewbacca is one of my favorites, so, oh, really? but I couldn't find one at the time. So. Too yeah. funny. Okay, so once we get the meat in the pot, what what is our next step? Okay, once we uh, pile it all in, then we're just going to we're going to go we're add the beans, then the tomatoes, and then we'll uh, start adding our uh, spices, and then of course that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, then we'll give it a uh, stir it up real good, and then let it simmer. Okay. And, uh, and it should be ready after about three or four hours. So. Okay. And how long have you been making this recipe? Uh, not long. Uh, about a, I guess about a year. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of new to the chili <laughs> contest circuit. Uh, so, uh, I, mean, well, I, I, I can't tell you all my secrets, but so. this is a good base that'll get you started for some good chili at the house. So. And you tweak it each time or? Uh, yes. Probably uh, not so much after you won with it, but. <laughs> or, right, but. Um, yeah, you can, uh, there, you, there's different variations. You can, uh, you don't have to use steak or sausage. You can just use, uh, say, two to three pounds of uh, ground beef. Uh, that would be fine. Uh, you definitely don't have to let that marinate as long. Um, but, um, you know, of course, if you don't like uh, sausage or pork products, you can just uh, stay with all beef. Use steak and ground beef. So I've did it, or I've, I've cooked it several different ways. So. I've never had anybody complain about it. So, <laughs> well, if you're cooking it at the station, they're not going to complain about it anyway because they want to get to eat. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Brian's actually at Station Three, which is located on Mercury Boulevard, and um, got a pretty good little crew out there. He's on B shift, so I'm sure that they don't mind you cooking, and they won't say no, a word. No, I think they they get kind of upset if I don't cook. So, <laughs> I think this is going to take just a little longer. Okay, and what are we looking for um, as far as to tell when it's time to put it in the, the well, chili pot? I'm just looking around making sure I don't see any pink. Okay. I just want to, uh, of course, the steak. You know, I'm not going to take the time to cut the bigger chunks in half, but uh, as long as I can tell that it's browned up, right. I'm happy with that. So. And it's smelling really, really good. Now, the purpose of the poblano um, is that just to impart some of that pepper flavor in uh, there? Or? Yes, the poblano, it's a, it's a mild pepper, although they can it can be sneaky hot sometimes. And I use the green, I think the red ones are hotter. Um, but uh, it just, I like to... You make I sure like, you've got all the seeds out of them when you... <laughs> yes, I do. I, I cut the seeds, I cut them and then get all the seeds out, rinse it out. So, yeah, I'll just, just uh, dice them up. I mean, it don't have to be too terribly small because you're going to be simmering it and cooking it down, it's gonna reduce, so. And just bite-sized um, pieces, right? Yeah, yes. Okay, and I'll get these items ready for you. Okay. So you said you wanna do the beans next? Sure, we're just okay. gonna, just gonna dump them in. Okay. And are those already flavored up? So those are, are the, actually the chili beans? Yeah, these okay. are the chili beans. I mean, there are several different brands out there. Bush just happens to be one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, you can get the, the chili beans are already uh, with mild, mild sauce, sauce or okay. hot sauce, yeah, like whatever you prefer. And those are stewed tomatoes or tomato uh, these sauce are cr or crushed tomatoes. Crushed tomatoes. Okay. Yeah. You could probably um, make it a little hotter too if you use like a uh, rotel or something like the diced with the chilies in it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, you put rotel and that adds some. Heat it might be too hot for me then, but okay. So what's up next? Okay. Well, let's. Uh, we're going to add a tablespoon of cumin of okay. coriander. Uh, I can go ahead and add the hot sauce. Okay. And like I said, I do about uh, five dashes of it. And of course, this is stuff you can add later. There you go. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Do you want the top off this or you just want to sprinkle it in there? Uh, we can we can sprinkle it in okay. there. I think I can eyeball it. You've been doing it for yeah. a year now. You should be yeah. able to eyeball it. Yep. Actually, I don't, you know what, I don't think yet. And, uh, Cap's gonna let it go. Okay. So that's there we good. Go. We know you got a little bit in there, yeah. so we won't make it a full teaspoon. Right. All right. All right. And All right. then salt and pepper. Do you usually uh, do that now, or do I, you do it when you, you? You can, but I always find that I'll add salt at the end too. Once okay. the, once we're getting before we serve, it seems like I always have to add some more. So um, you can go around a couple times, add some salt. Okay, uh, if you have a pepper grinder uh, or pepper meal. Uh, uh, you know, at home, I think mine, about 20 turns is what I use uh, to uh, add the pepper to it. But 
That's pretty I smart guess, to count your turns. I, yeah, mean, I don't yeah. guess I've ever thought about doing that. Okay, well, I said we'll need a tablespoon for this. Tablespoon? So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, now uh, I use about, well, four tablespoons of chili. That might sound like a lot, but I like a, I like a chili to taste like chili, chili powder, so. Well, and it's a pretty big pot, so yeah, that's yeah. okay. And you can't argue with the chef, you gotta. <laughs> if you wanna eat, don't argue yeah. with the chef. Yeah. Um, what are your other specialties as far as what you cook at the station? I know you said the guys like it when you cook. What else do you make out um, there? Let's see. Um, I don't know if I'd call them specialties. Uh, we do a uh, beef tips and gravy, um, uh, uh, chicken, homemade chicken pot pie. Uh, just several things that I go through. I'll, I'll rotate through. Uh, I make a pretty mean Reuben, Reuben sandwich. Uh, the guys well, all I like, like that. So, uh, um, but that's about it as far as uh, I would never call them specialties. Uh, like, you know, we make desserts, uh, uh, make our own desserts there. Uh, some uh, uh, just various different, uh, I guess. Y'all big sweet eaters out there. Uh, we're trying not to be here lately, so. <laughs> so we're just gonna give this a good stir and let it simmer on the stove for how long? Uh, well, at least three hours. Okay. I mean, it, it's gonna start reducing down, but I like uh, chili to be uh, uh, really thick. I mean, you can, uh, you can, I guess, make it thinner, but if I wouldn't add water to make it thinner. I would just buy more crushed tomatoes uh, to uh, thin it out. But uh, it's gonna look really thick right now, but as it, as it simmers, it's gonna continue to reduce down and it'll come up, it'll be a nice consistency for chili. So. And if you didn't have time to uh, stay by the stove and let it simmer on the stove and keep an eye on it, you could always put it in a crock pot, is a that crock correct? Crock pot, that's correct. And that's okay. uh, what I prefer, I'll put it in a crock pot and uh, and let it go for about uh, six to eight hours on low. So okay, and I understand that's what you and did that's last what night. One. Well, that's what I did last night, that's correct. <laughs> so I'm ready to get into this chili. I'm gonna move this bowl so that you can get us some served up and I can try it. All right, let me try this here. It smells so good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I don't want to see this. You know, I don't want to see this as your entry now. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I'm never entering again. Oh, okay. I got shot down. I'm yeah. not. <laughs> I'll do it just for fun next time, Sorry. maybe. Let me get, get something to wipe that off. Make sure you serve yourself up a little too. Oh, but this is definitely mine. I get the first shot at eating this. <laughs> Okay, make sure I get some good chunks of steak in there. <laughs> that is really good. You can tell that the marinating process made the steak very tender and that all the flavors in there came together and I gotta have another bite. So it's not real hot, but it, you can tell it has some spice. It's after. got a little spice to it, a little smokiness, very good. The force was definitely with you, Mr. Darth Vader, on this chili. Yep, you have to channel your dark side to make good <laughs> chili. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Captain Lowe, for being with he us here today in the Discovery Center's kitchen, thank making you. your award-winning recipe. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it very much, and we hope that you'll join us next time. You can catch this recipe and past episodes on YouTube or on the city's website at www.murfreesboro.tn.gov slash cookingwithmfrd. Thank you very much for joining us.